In this video, we will discuss the three considerations of foreign investment. Let's start by discussing establishment. As per Foreign Direct Investment Policy, read with the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999 and Foreign Exchange Management Transfer or Issue of Security by Person Resident Outside India, Regulations 2017, 100% of foreign direct investment is permissible under automatic route that is without the approval of Indian government for exploration and production in oil and gas fields. Accordingly, a foreign company can undertake operations in oil and gas sector either by itself or as a consortium with the Indian partner. A foreign company can undertake exploration and for production activities in India without incorporating a company in India. Most foreign companies operating in the sector has set up a project office. The setting up of a project office is regulated under the Foreign Exchange Management Regulations 2016 as may be amended from time to time. Then comes capital, labor and content restrictions. As discussed previously, 100% foreign direct investment is permitted under FDI policy as per the provisions of Foreign Exchange Management Act. Certain restrictions can be placed on transactions based on their classification as current account transaction and capital account transactions. Current account transactions are permissible unless specifically restricted by the Indian government and all capital account transactions are specifically prohibited under specially permitted by Indian government. With respect to local content and employment to Indian citizens, the product sharing contracts and revenue sharing contracts provide that one, the contractor shall be maximum extent possible, employ and require the operator and its subcontractors to employ Indian citizens having appropriate qualification and experience. And two, the contractor shall give preference to the purchase and use of goods that are manufactured, produced or supplied in India, subject to their timing of delivery, quality, quantity and required prices and other terms. Anti-corruption. The Prevention of Corruption Act 1988 or POCA is the primary legislation for prevention of corruption in India. As per amendment of July 2018 to Prevention of Corruption Act of 1988, commercial organization including companies that are either incorporated or undertaking business in India can be specifically charged as a bribe givers and are punishable with fine. The Central Vigilance Commission or CVC is the apex vigilance institution and is free from any executive control. The CVC pursuant to the mandate granted to it under the Central Vigilance Commission Act 2003 can conduct inquiries into allegations of offences committed under POCA by certain categories of public servants, government companies, societies and local authorities, etc. The Black Money and Imposition of Tax Act in 2015 regulates the undisclosed foreign income and assets and imposes penal taxes on undisclosed foreign income and assets. Additional criminal liabilities have also been included under the legislation for non-disclosure of foreign assets. The Prevention of Money Laundering or PML Act of 2002 and the Prevention of Money Laundering Rules 2005 prohibit and criminalize money laundering activities in India. Under PML Act Money laundering is defined as any process or activities connected with the proceeds of a crime listed in the schedule to the PML Act. 
and projecting or claiming it as untainted property. In a recent judgment from the Supreme Court of India, it was held the word and appeared before the phrase projecting or claiming it as untainted property would have to be read as or, thereby giving an expansive interpretation of the meaning of money laundering. As per the judgment, projecting or claiming the property as untainted property would constitute an offence of money laundering, independent of other acts which may constitute an offence under PML Act. To prevent money laundering activities, the PML Act requires all banks, financial institutions and persons engaged in certain designated activities to maintain records of all the transactions undertaken. An operator of an upstream oil and gas block does not qualify as a reporting entity under PML Act and the PML rules. The Companies Act 2013 also contain provisions with respect to statutory audits, corporate governance requirements, annual filing requirements, among others, that are inter alia seek to prevent fraud and instances of money laundering. Further pursuant to Section 216 of Companies Act 2013, the Indian government has the power to initiate the investment to find out the real beneficiary of a financial transaction undertaken by the company. With this, we come to the end of this video.